What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell as we get going. Goes a long way for me on these videos. Goes a long way for you because you become apprised whenever great information is going live here at the Odd Chopper channel. Oh my bojan. Yeah. You're damn right. You're damn right. So second biggest win of the year for me on an individual bet. Most I've bet on anything individually. His points prop went to 17 and a half against the Lakers. A couple of wonky games, uh, that Memphis one specifically. I don't know why the books dropped that number so low, but minus 125 Drews at DraftKings today is what it was. I slammed that to the moon. 10 unit W, 12 and a half units that I put on it. I just... I love everything about this man. My child, Bojan Bogdanovich Lindquist, is going to be one gem of a person. Even if it's female, it's going to be lovely, and I'm going to enjoy that. Shout out my wife. She's going to be okay with it because, you know, that's how I'm going to be able to afford to have one of those things. But either way, I want you guys signing up at DraftKings. We'll talk about what everything entails over there. We're going to bet Texas. Yeah, we're going to bet Texas in the college basketball streets. Bet $5, win 150 on any sport. Sign up in the video description box below. I'll talk about it a little bit later, more in depth, but just shout out Bojan. Shout out the premium Discord, which is just popping here of late. Uh, the last couple of weeks since I got back from France, I need to go to Europe more often. That is the moral of this story, because then we just print winners non-stop and so you can sign up for that using promo code el insider at stochastic.com slash lindy again link in the video description box below come join first week completely free then just 9.99 uh that's nine dollars and 99 cents uh much cheaper than anything else you're gonna find in the industry per week after that all righty y'all seven games in the nba street i'm ready for another profitable week hopefully you are too let's get to the picks off to Indiana, where the Pacers host the Heat, and starting with the Pacers here, they had one of the more embarrassing, egregious losses, I can recall, as the Nets rested Kyrie and Durant and Simmons and legit everyone, yet still lost to the likes of Edmund Sumner and Dayron Sharp. Dayron Sharp. Dayron Sharp. Dayron Sharp. I'm not a dad yet, but I could imagine some of you want to kill me after that, but that's cool. Not good. Anyways, Monday, they get a Heat team that started to get moderately healthier, question mark. Uh, Jimmy Butler, he's probable. Tyler Hero, probable. Max Struess, probable. Victor Oladipo, back in this rotation, and probable. Gives me probable cause to think the Pacers should get bigger than two and a half point dogs here based on their Saturday performance. I'm hilarious. No, I'm not. But that's one game, and I don't want to overreact. So I think the spread is still something to steer clear of the atmosphere over on this one. However, there is one play that is mind-numbingly low in my opinion, and that is the already posted Tyrese Halliburton assist prop, which opened at 10 and a half with plus money attached to it at DraftKings.com. For a little context, Halliburton's been sporting 11 and a half assist props routinely when healthy. And despite some extremely efficient shooting performances of late that have led to fewer assist opportunities at time, 10 and a half at plus money on assists here, too good to pass up. Now, I get it. We're not going to jam it like we've done a couple of times recently because Andrew Nemhard, the 31st pick in last year's draft, is the truth. I'm enjoying this kid. Hopefully you are too. He's emerged and is rightfully getting more minutes. Plus, the Heat play at the fifth slowest pace in the NBA and will be at full strength assumed here. But a nice standard unit and a nice standard like to kick off the day here. I project Tyrese Halliburton right around 11 assists. And you're giving me plus money on the over? That my friends, it's called value. Give me a like button to start off our day. To Washington next for a fascinating little spot as the Wizards host the Nets. And don't look now, but the Brooklyn Nets, 16 and 12 and fourth in the Eastern Conference now. And despite some big performances from Kyle Kuzma and Kristaps uh, Porzingis of late, that has not resulted in wins for the other side, the Washington Wizards. In fact, Washington's lost six straight and nine of their past 10 outings. That's about the same rate that I win arguments with my wife. And the one time that I actually do win, it still feels like a loss, which is what I'm totally thinking that the Wizards feel like missing Bradley Beal over the past week. I gotta be quieter. Now, there's a very, very outside chance Beal plays in this one. They said he would be reevaluated for his hamstring injury after a week exactly one week ago. So just waiting on news there tomorrow morning. But as it stands on Sunday night, I do not expect him to play which makes laying five points on the road against Washington a pretty interesting proposition. 
The Wizards will get Will Barton. Yes, Will Barton, part of that Denver trade, back in the rotation after a couple days off. Didn't play the last two. That could be interesting. But even that doesn't really mean a whole lot if Monty Morris doesn't suit up. He's questionable, and I have him leaning on sitting on this one, too. In fact, poor Washington, we're going to have to pick on you. You faced a net starting unit here that's coming off of a lot of rest. I'm going to say lock it up. Yep, first of two locks on the day. The Nets minus five as the Nets will not be denied. Healthy Simmons, healthy Kyrie, healthy Durant. Yikes, Scoob. Brooklyn, minus five, gets the job done. Next up, we've got the Hawks on a back-to-back -back facing the Grizzlies and gigantic news surrounding this one as Ja Morant enters as questionable, as does K-Way Steven Adams. That was the worst impression ever. And I've seen this movie before, y'all. Tyus Jones, I remain fervent, is one of the league's best backup point guards, and the Grizz have weird ways of finding wins in Morant's absence over the last few years as a result. Still... I think by now you know my love of Ja. I think Ja is fantastic. And him out is obviously a downgrade regardless of what others might tell you. As for the Hawks, they were in a bit of a slide until the overtime win Sunday against the Bulls. But do they rest anyone on the back-to-back -back on Monday? I don't know. We'll see. But I don't feel like going all crazy and gung-ho trying to figure this one out. There's so much uncertainty here. I think there's a number of ways the news could fall. If I'm able to find a way to read these tea leaves, maybe something changes and I will find something advantageous for a bet. But I expect silliness before tip-off here. Something random is going to pop up on the injury report, I think from both sides. So be on high alert. See if you can react to it. I'm not positive what that will be. So there's no props out here yet. Why would the books post it? Be very unadvantageous and we would take advantage. So I think it's very clear cut to steer clear of this game until more information becomes known. If I do have anything here, I'll lean the under for now of 229 for this game as my model has this slightly lower to account for the number of pieces who could possibly rest here. But hard for me to imagine anything making the card until, you know, Trey Young and John Morant get confirmed as in or out. Kind of important. Under. 229. Cool. Oh, hello, friends. This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Texas is a 28-point favorite against Rice. That's a food group. Bet Texas on the money line. You could get on the money line. All you have to do is bet $5, and you get $150 against a food group with the Texas Longhorns. Just do that. I don't know why you wouldn't. If you haven't signed up for DraftKings, go to the video description box below. Deposit bet $5 on literally Texas, and you're going to get $150. If they lose this game, I won't show up on the show tomorrow. I just won't. I'll be gone because then I have failed you as a person. So Texas, they're going to get it done or or else. I'm just, I'm gone. So Texas, they're going to get it done against a delicious, delicious food. We move on. Hey, we're going back to Texas. I know Rice is in Texas, and here we are in Texas. Shout out Dallas. Shout out Fort Wayne. Shout out all the things. They're hosting Oklahoma City. They're in the middle of Tankathon 2022, soon to be 2023. But anyway, we're talking about the Mavs first here. They had Luka Doncic. He rested on Saturday against the Bulls, and boy, was that a disaster for the Mavs. As offensively, they sucked. Defensively, they sucked. Almost like Luka matters or something, huh? Yeah, he's pretty good. In fact, they are massive favorites here at eight and a half points against this, once again, ridiculously bad Thunder team, even though the record is looking much better and Shea Gilgis Alexander continues to play good basketball. But they drop back to back games here now after winning three in a row. <laughs> Sam Presti, GM Sam Presti, probably must have been testy. Sam Presti, it rhymed. But that's the spread here. Uh, it looks efficient. Eight and a half, it's just fine. Total looks efficient too. And even though there's no props out yet, I'll talk through why, of late, I've been projecting Luca's points props a lot higher than just about anybody else in the industry. Luca carries a 38.2% usage rate on the season, highest in the NBA so far. He averages 36 and a half minutes per game. He averages a, sh a hair shy of 33 points per game, but because his team plays at the second slowest pace in the NBA, He's somehow getting penalized with props around 30 and a half, 31 and a half. That's kind of routinely been where his pro points prop have been sitting. And yes, Tim Hardaway Jr. might impact that long term now that he's in the starting rotation. But so far, it's minimal as he has a 35.9% usage rate in the 405 minutes that he and THJ have shared the court this season. So all in all, 
I'm expecting Lucas Prop to remain in that 30 and a half, 31 and a half range, and it remains too low. I need to be betting this. So I want to call it a lean for now because I don't want to get in the habit of giving you guys locks or likes on things that aren't available yet. I want to see what that number is because, I mean, a minus 150, that isn't something I'm interested in at 30 and a half or 31 and a half. A minus 120, I could have a conversation about because, again, it's all about the number attached to it at the end of the day. I'm leaning the over of this as long as the juice isn't out of control. Be paying close attention. And if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter at Eric Lindquist. Ask me, hey, did you bet Luka Doncic is over on his points prop? And I will say, yes, I did. Or no, I didn't. Or I won't respond because you have some crazy avatar. So don't have a crazy avatar and we'll be all set. Hey, over Luka Doncic, 30 and a half or 31 and a half, depending on where it is. We'll check it out tomorrow. Surprise, little W, but the Spurs, yeah, the Spurs won on Saturday against the Heat. We're not expecting that. Pop, he's trying to get a Frenchman. Yeah, that's what he's trying to do here in his elder age. He's trying to get himself Victor Wembanyama. He doesn't want to win basketball games, but they're going to be hosting a team that could be back to just about full strength here. We've got Kevin Love questionable and the biggie, Donovan Mitchell questionable. Oh boy, oh boy, this could be very, very fun to be able to take advantage of the news here. Now, I have to just throw this out there ahead of time. If you don't have Donovan Mitchell and Kevin Love playing, I think this number is efficient. That isn't why I'm putting a like attached to this. The reason I'm putting a like attached to this is it's already efficient in my model. When you get something like this, you want to be taking like buttons on these kind of numbers because... If you knew Donovan Mitchell was playing in this game tomorrow, that moves to seven and a half for me, just north of seven and a half, actually, 7.8. With Kevin Love, that's another half point for me. You could be looking at a lock type play here. So this is a, lo uh, a like play. Good Lord, just getting my L's confused, screwing up myself. Look, it's a like on five and a half. It's very straightforward. San Antonio, not a very good basketball team. Jakob Pertl continues to be out. Keita Bates Diop continues to be back, uh, continues to be out. Their first round pick, Jeremy Sokan, he is questionable. Chance he could see the floor. That would be an upgrade slightly for them, but doesn't even remotely compare to the difference between Donovan Mitchell being in and out. He is the key to this entire castle. Hopefully, he unlocks the door. That was a terrible analogy. Just like button, minus five and a half Cleveland. We go to the next game. My Minnesota Timberwolves partaking in round two against the Trailblazers. Didn't go very well. Six point loss there on the uh, on the old Saturday night. Didn't enjoy that in any way, shape, or form. Coming off of Gobert, they played very, very well in Utah on that Friday. Looked pretty decent out there, but you know Gobert. He has revenge in his heart. You knew he was going to come out there and do the mic thing that he you know what I'm talking about. Just know that Rudy Gobert is somebody that I'm very upset with. And I do not trust going forward just because we just need to see him be able to deal with some type perimeter centers. However, not really a true perimeter center that you're looking at on this on this team. Uh, Yusuf Nurkic, Drew Eubanks, questionable. Maybe they try to go uh, small here at times, try to get Jeremy Grant uh, at the five and do some different looks to, to really throw it off. Trent, uh, Trent Wofford, somebody that has been playing the five here of late as well. Uh, try to get Gobert to have to go out and play on the perimeter. Uh, that is that rebound prop up to 12 and a half. Continually something I'm paying attention to. I don't think there's any value on it at this point in time. Wish I had been on that a little bit sooner, but hey, such is life. We've been smashing. I'm okay with it. But look at the Portland side here, guys. The Portland side is so fantastic. It's beautiful with Damian Lillard, Anthony Simons back in play. But what is going on with Damian Lillard's point prop? points prop here he is the alpha when you have him and Anthony Simons together Anthony Simons is still giving way to Damian Lillard so why are we looking at such a low points prop on Dame who's already playing his full allotment of minutes since returning after a quite the hiatus 32 all the way up to 38 and then 41 minutes against Minnesota there on Saturday why is his points prop sitting at 27 and a half here, considering he averages 27 and a half on the season, now is the healthiest he's been in a while, is playing over 38 minutes in these healthy type spots, gets a phenomenal matchup against this backcourt that has zero interest in playing defense on the Minnesota side. Why wouldn't we jam Damian Lillard to the moon here? 
Oh wait, we can because that's what we're here to do. We're here to bet things. And I want to bet Damian Lillard scoring a bazillion points on my Minnesota Timberwolves. Maybe it's a little self-deprecation. That shouldn't surprise anybody at this point in time. But, oh, you know, it's one of those things. I can cheer for my Timberwolves and I can cheer for money too. I'm going to cheer for money even more. Damian Lillard over 27 and a half points. Lock it up. My second pick of the day that Brooklyn put them together. Get yourself a nice Christmas sweater. That rhymed too. And our last game of the day. This is a little bit of a cluster F if you know what I'm getting at. We have the Boston Celtics going up against the Clippers. And I just want to do a special shout out to Jason Tatum. Oh, this dick, this dude, Jason Tatum, my guy. What are you doing? What are you doing against Golden State? They lose by 16. He has the worst performance I've ever seen this guy play. I love him. He's a dookie. How can you not? He played 40 minutes and scored 18 points. Do you know how big of an anomaly it is for a guy like Jason Tatum, who averages 30 a game, playing just around 36 minutes a game, to score only 18 in 40 minutes? Why does Andrew Wiggins have this dude's number? I don't understand. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. <sighs> Whatever. I don't really like anything from this game is kind of what I'm getting at here. We have the healthier iteration of these Clippers here of late. Only Norman Powell going to be on the shelf for this one. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, they're healthy. That's really, really good stuff. Starting to see an upward trend in the minutes. Paul George looked exceptional over the weekend. Get your popcorn ready. This Clippers team is about to start rocking. But do you really want to go out of your way to go pick on them? or to pick them and bet on them against the 21 and six Boston Celtics. I don't know. I'm leaning that way. That's where I would kind of be thinking about things, but just even saying it out loud doesn't make it nice. So I'm not betting this. I'm going to enjoy this game. Just like everybody else. Can't wait to watch it. Jason Tatum. I'm still mad at you, but we're going to lean the Clippers on the money line, hosting the Celtics. Just going to be an enjoyable one to watch. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Head to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays on Monday's slate. Looking forward to this seven gamers. I think there's a lot of great spots, lots of other potentially great spots, but one spot that is guaranteed to be profitable for you. Heading to DraftKings right now. If you have not signed up there yet, bet $5. So you're going to click on the link below. Bet $5 on the Texas money line in the college basketball streets. Yes, $5 on the Texas money line. Because when your bet wins, you get yourself $150 in free play over at DraftKings. That's a plus 3,000 value on something that's literally minus a billion, it would seem. Uh, they're going to just beat up on race. So best of luck to them. Enjoy your food. But guys, I'll be back on Tuesday. Looking forward to this one. Oh boy. Going to be an exciting, exciting week. We're going to try to keep the fire coming until tomorrow. I should just say tomorrow. I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Monday.